Hometown Ghost Stories contains serious and often distressing events and is not intended for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, baby, we are here knocking the ring rust off after a little bit of a vacation for us. But as always for these horror movie reviews, I am your host, Rob Coakley, joined, as always, by Jesse Wilkins. Hello. And Dave Wilkins. Hey, nice cold open. Thanks. It was it, it absolutely was absolutely awesome. amazing, right? But who cares about the cold open? That's over. That's the past. Right now, we are getting ready to talk about... It's kind of a sad day. It's a glorious day because we're covering another Evil Dead movie, but this is the last Evil Dead movie for us to cover at the moment until a new one comes out. I guess there's always the TV series. But uh, before we jump into it, Dave, why don't you give us a synopsis for Evil Dead 2013? I would love to. So Evil Dead 2013, directed by Fede Alvarez. Mia, a drug addict, is determined to kick the habit. To that end, she asks her brother David, his girlfriend Natalie, and their friends Olivia and Eric to accompany her to their family's remote forest cabin to help her through withdrawal. Eric finds a mysterious book of the dead at the cabin and reads it aloud, awakening an ancient demon. All hell breaks loose when the malevolent entity possesses Mia. So I have a thought about this movie. And I hope you have more than one thought. I hope you have multiple so that we can make this show at least a half hour long. Nope. Just one thought. And <laughs> okay. uh, here we go. I'm going to just throw it out there and you can toss it back if you don't like it. But what I think is this is definitely in the conversation for the best horror movie remake of all time. And I think you can probably put it at the top as number one for a couple of reasons and my reasoning behind this being the best horror movie remake of all time is because when you're talking about the best horror movie remakes of all time, you have to talk about the thing and you have to talk about the fly, right? These are two of like the all time greats. And I think you can take them out of it because those weren't true remakes. They weren't like a direct remake. They were kind of like inspired by the original and they were redone in a different way. Whereas this, I feel like was more of a, was held true to the, to the original evil dead, even though it wasn't completely the same there were, they changed a couple things, but this was cabin in the woods, right? This was your final girl, final guy, whatever, you know, they changed a couple of things, but whereas the thing in the fly were like remakes of the original, but they changed everything about the plot. This I felt was more true to the original, and I think they did the best job with this Evil Dead remake. I think I speak for our entire live audience and asking, "What the fuck are you talking about right now?" Hell yeah, dude! I'm just, <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I think that I think that's all in your perception, though, of if this is a remake, right? And and Evil Dead is 2013. I have a hard time classifying it as a true remake of the original Evil Dead movie. It almost feels like in continuation um, by the way we're going to spoil this movie so if you have not seen evil dead 2013 and you'd like to watch this movie this isn't the review for you you should jump out you should definitely go watch it and then come back and watch this review but if you don't mind the spoilers we're going to spoil it right now um i think this is this is clearly a continuation of evil dead and we get it in a post credit stinger and that's jumping all the way to the end of the movie past the credits where ash shows up and you get a groovy at the end. You get him looking at the camera. But it wasn't it wasn't part of the plot. It had nothing to do with the movie. I feel like it was just an homage to Ash. They just stuck him in there. They just forced it in at the end. Yeah, but a post credit scene is usually telling you where the franchise is going, and we didn't get a continuation. But it didn't it didn't go there. Well, it wasn't able to. They they shut down whatever plans they had to continue it. So, so I guess so in retrospect, it wasn't, right? So but that's still the plan just because it didn't happen. Doesn't mean that wasn't what they were going for. That's why I have a problem classifying this as a remake. I feel like, I feel like the, 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 the cut at the end with Ash wasn't enough 
to establish whether or not it was for a sequel or a prequel or whatever. It just was there. They, I feel like they just stuck him in there just to have him in there, much like they did with Evil Dead Rise. And um, I guess, I mean, spoiler alerts all across the board for the Evil Dead franchise, but like with Evil Dead Rise, they had to have Ash in there. And the only part that he was in was just a soundbite, right? Yeah, but that, that's they, they just no. I, I feel like it's the same thing. They mm. they stuck him in there just to stick him in there. It's the same. Like he wasn't part of the plot. He wasn't part of the original story. I mean, you know what I mean. The original. He wasn't part of the actual story. He wasn't part of the plot. They just stuck him in at the end. In 2013, it was a uh, a groovy sound bite, and in 20 and in 2023, it was the just a sound effect, right? Just just, just get him in there because they have to get him in there. But he showed up as Ash in the movie is the point. And in and, and Evil Dead Rise, it was Bruce Campbell doing a sound effect. Right. They portrayed him as Ash in the post credit stinger. Wasn't it just him just saying the word groovy? Yeah, as the character. He's he's wearing the outfit. Yeah, but with without context, right? There was nothing else there. There's nothing surrounding it. There was nothing it's backing a it up. Credit stinger. It's supposed to get you hyped for the next movie. They just weren't able to move forward with the next movie. Very much like if Iron Man didn't do what Iron Man was supposed to do, that whole post credit scene with, um, with with um, God Samuel L. Jackson yeah. showing up wouldn't have mattered because they wouldn't have continued with the franchise because it did so well that actually the Nick Fury thing actually shows up and, and becomes a big part of it. A post credit stinger is where you're supposed to be going with the franchise, right? With sure. very few exceptions. I mean, like the, the silly ones like Deadpool that just um, was parodying Ferris Bueller's day offs. post credit so, stinger. Like, so what happened though? So back it up. So what happened? I don't remember off the top of my head because it's been 11 years, but I don't think the movie um, did well enough in the box office that the studio was comfortable moving forward with a with a sequel to this. And mm -hmm. that's why you ended up getting the Evil Dead TV show, right? Because yeah. that's what, what ended up happening was they, they split off and did that instead because the studio... I think that we're going to get into that with this movie. Why? I think the movie... I don't want to say it was ahead of its time, but I think it went tonally in a different direction than even like maybe the studio thought it would. And maybe the studio wasn't comfortable with how gory and how like just absolutely raw this movie got. Fair terrible. enough. Right. So, I mean, this, so if you, if you take this movie, right, if you take evil dead rise out of it, cause it hasn't happened yet. We're 10 years before evil dead rise came out. This movie drops, right? This is the fourth movie of the franchise. And before that you have, two very silly movies, right? Evil Dead 2 and Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness, were two very silly movies, which kind of makes you forget that the original Evil Dead was dark and kind of bleak. And at the time, in 1981, was way outside the box. And everybody, this movie had an X rating when it came out. 1981, when this movie dropped, it had, they actually had to cut 45 seconds out of the movie to get the X rating for them to even drop this movie in theaters. That's how horrifying and outside the box and disturbing and bleak 1981 Evil Dead was. This movie rocked people. So when this movie came out in 1981, you had that, right? And then you kind of got away from that. They kind of they kind of went back and they did their own thing with between Evil Dead 1 and Evil Dead 2. They they it was a it was a whole remake thing and they were they were battling with you know, the people that owned it and they kind of rebranded it as a comedy. And then army of darkness came out as an even sillier kind of like action comedy. And then evil dead 2013 comes out. And I feel like by the time 2013 came out, this movie that we're reviewing, people kind of forgot that the original evil dead was so dark and so disturbing. So when they saw this movie in 2013, out of the five movies is the bleakest, the least funny, the bloodiest, the goriest, maybe not the bloodiest and goriest. Evil Dead Rise is pretty gory, but this was definitely the bleakest. And it just shocked audiences. It didn't do that well at first. It did better in retrospect. And I even remember when we all went to go see this movie back in 2013, that we left the movie theater. It was like, that was awesome. Yeah, Evil Dead, cool. And then we never talked about it again. It wasn't anything crazy. Whereas when Evil Dead Rise came out, I was like, this is the best movie I ever saw in my life. So... I just remember this movie was, it was so shocking and so bleak and so dark when it came out. And when I rewatched it, it just, I don't know. 
it, it, it hit different. What, what, what are your thoughts? Jesse? Well, first, let's thank Tess for the 20, uh, for the 20 gifted memberships that she just gave us. Thank you. You're a rock star, yeah. Tess. Big shout, out, big shout out to Tess for the 20 gifted. And then uh, J uh, Joy. Joy actually donated $5 in Super Chat as well. Thank hey. you so much for those. Um, I also watched this movie. Uh, so when I first saw it in the theater, yeah, <laughs> that helps. It does. <laughs> Who knew? 20 minutes in the show, I'd be able to talk. Um, when I first saw this movie in theaters, I, I was like, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't think too much of it. And then rewatching it, I was like, oh, God, we're watching a 2013 horror movie. It's Evil Dead. I don't even really remember it. So I'm like, this is, this is going to be garbage. And it is one of my favorite movies I've ever watched in my life. This movie was badass, start to finish. It was so good. Uh, it was gory as hell. It was actually scary. Do you know how long it's been that I've watched a horror movie that actually made me jump and was actually unsettling and actually shocking and scary? It's been a long time, probably since 2013 when I watched this movie. I don't know. I think <laughs> like, I haven't been... Go ahead. That's, I think that's, that's interesting because I don't think this was a jump scare movie. Right. They weren't like, and now I'm not, I'm not saying that like you're wrong. I'm saying that this wasn't a movie that was trying to set you up for jump scares. Mm -hmm. This was a movie that was trying to shock you for sure. And trying to upset you and disturb you. And a couple of times you absolutely jump, but just to like juxtapose this movie with jump scare horror movies, this wasn't one of them. And they still got you to do that. They did. Yeah. And, and most of it was just kind of when they were seeing like the ghostly zombie figures, in in the woods and i i wouldn't deadites consider no well it, it wasn't necessarily deadites it, it more felt like a jump scare where you're seeing a ghost that you're not sure mm. if everyone else would see it didn't feel like deadites at that point in the movie um because it looked like i couldn't tell but it looked like it might have been the character themselves being portrayed in their death and you kind of got that with the premonitions from the book so i loved so much of this of this movie that the gore was so over the top it was an absolute bloodbath so many shocking scenes you had the girl cutting her arm off you had the girl splitting her tongue you had the girl cutting her face off like there, there was so much over the top terrifying stuff that went on this movie i was like damn how did i how did i even forget about this movie for the most part like we watched it and kind of moved on from it we didn't really talk about it like that was it uh, evil dead rise came out i was like best evil dead ever and then i go back and watch this and while it's so much different than the classics and you guys were kind of debating, is this a remake? It's definitely not a remake. You could call it a reimagine, but it's not even really that. It's kind of, like Rob said, it's kind of a continuation. Like this is a modern day take, which by the way, this plot line makes so much sense because you get a lot of these Cabin in the Woods movies where it's like, why? Why would this group of college kids or a group of young adults go rent this garbage cabin for a weekend? And their plot line made so much sense. I really appreciated that. It was like, okay, this sister is a drug addict. They want to get her. They, they've tried it time and time again. We've all been through it. We all have, unfortunately, friends and family. I'm sure that everyone has somebody who has gone through that battle. And you know how hard it is. You know it's not going to be the first times of success. Very rare. It's going to be three, four, five, six, seven times. And hopefully they, they eventually get better, right? So you understand the frustration. You understand the mindset around everybody in that movie. You have the registered nurse who, who thinks she's a know-it-all and thinks that she can handle this situation. You get the brother and the friends. You get a couple of friends that are just so done with it. Like, yeah, we've done this before. We'll do it again. Like, she's just going to relapse again, but whatever. We'll give this a shot. So this is their new solution. Let's go get a cabin in the middle of nowhere where we're going to basically say, no, you can't leave. And we're so far away from civilization that it's going to be so difficult for you to get out of this that we're just going to we're going to get you clean, and that that's the way we're going to do it. Well, this is why I think it's a remake. I think that it's a remake, and they added they filled in a lot of the blanks, right? So the original movie was a group of friends go to a cabin in the woods, a demon attacks them, and horror unfolds. Right? There are so sure. many blanks, which is totally fine for a horror movie. I love it. I love it. Like. Answer me no questions. Leave me to guess and to fill in the blanks myself. I think that's fantastic. I love the original Evil Dead. I think it's one of my all-time favorite horror movies. Top three. I'm not, I'm, not I'm just saying. Like, no, no, I know you're not. I know you're not. 
I'm just saying like, this is why I think that this movie was a remake where they backfilled a lot of the blanks that were left in the original, right? So it's kind of the same story, right? You have kind, of, the, kind of, but they didn't back, right. they were, they're they not back, the, no, no, they're not backfilling, but they're, 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 they're filling in, they're filling in the blanks, right? Kind so of, but have, they're, they're completely making up a story that had absolutely nothing to do with the original. So I wouldn't right. say you're filling in the blanks, but they're, they're, they're coming with a, like, there's no way anybody ever watched the original Evil Dead and was like, oh, one of them must have been a drug addict. Probably. No, no, like, no, no, this, no, no, that's no, not no, a blank. Let, let, me finish, let me finish my thought. Oh, okay. So the original, you have a, a, a group of friends go to a cabin in the woods. They go to the cabin. There's no additional context. A demon attacks them. They turn into deadites and all chaos breaks out, right? This movie, it just fills in the blanks. So you have like a, a group of people that go to a cabin, the same shit happens, but more happens in between. Why do they go to the cabin? Here's why. Because one of them was addicted to drugs and they want to have her detox. And now that fills in the blanks as to why when she starts going insane, they're like, why don't we all just leave? Because something's obviously wrong. Because if you're there for just to camp, then when somebody starts going insane, you say, we get out of here because something's wrong. Now they, they say when, some, when something's going wrong with this girl, they say it's because she's having withdrawal symptoms. So this, they're filling in blanks. They really right. are. But they're, but they're yeah. filling in blanks for their own movie. So they, they made this movie make sense, right? This has nothing to do with the blanks that were left open in the original Evil Dead. That's no, they added, they added their own blanks for sure. They absolutely did. But the original movie was just people go to cabin, shit breaks out, people die. That's it. There were just three points for that movie. There was no right. real like substance to that movie, which again is fine. But what 2013 did was they, they had all of the same, uh, they had all the same points, right? You people go to the cabin, bad shit happens, everyone dies. And then they just filled in the blanks. It's the same story just with more detail. I disagree. I think it's a different story. I, I it, it, disagree it's, as well. It's, it's yeah, definitely it's a different story. Completely different, completely it's different the same story, story with it's more just, packed into it. It's a it's cabin. Different. It yeah, it is very different. It's a cabin because, because they give a reason for them to be there. The other one, you watch the movie and you just assume, oh, these are just people who, a young, you know, relatively young people who went to a cabin to, to have sex and, and drink beer. Because yeah. that, that's what that movie was. There was no there was no blanks that needed to be filled in that movie. Like, yeah, you rented a, co- a cabin to have some fun for the weekend. I'm this not saying one, there they was more of a story to be filled in. I'm not saying that like Evil Dead 1981 was like this is, I needed more out of it. So what 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 I love about 2013 was they took that Evil Dead movie. They took the exact same movie, which was they left so much open for interpretation, and they filled it in, which it could have gone horribly wrong. Because I hate when movies do that. Usually, because it's like, oh, well, you didn't need to fill all this in. They did fill it in because it is the same movie. It's the same beginning, same middle, same end with all sorts of extra stuff packed into it. And it worked. That's why this is such a good movie. You can absolutely make the argument that it was not a remake because it was such a different movie. But I think that if you zoom out and look at it, it really is the same movie with extra stuff packed in. You have a, So th- that, that means when you zoom out and look at it, it has a different plot, has different character I, there's, there's so much more character development. There's more to it. And whereas it could have gone wrong, it didn't. And I think it worked out really well. But yeah, I think I mean, you can make you have a general premise of, and Brandon kind of brings it up here, but you have a general premise of it's a movie franchise. So it's another Evil Dead movie. So it's going to be the same idea, but it's a completely different movie. And, and I'm just going to reiterate this. If a legacy character shows up in any form in the movie as the legacy character, it cannot be a remake because you have a legacy character showing up. Right. I, I am more with Dave on this whole extra cut scene at the end of the credits for two reasons. Number one is because it had absolutely nothing to do with the movie. Number two, I never actually, I never actually even stuck around and saw the end credits. So I never even knew that he did it and it didn't matter because that had absolutely nothing to do with the movie. So okay, it's that's what a teaser is though. Like that's what it's never going to affect the actual movie. It's right. always setting up the future. Oh, kind of. Sometimes it affects the movie. Sometimes you get a premonition of someone that you thought was dead in the movie might actually be alive in the movie or alive in the next movie or whatever. And I agree. It might setting set up, up the future. next movie. <laughs> no, this wasn't setting up anything. This was just, they were just paying homage to him. I mean, he was, he, was, was, seen it. <laughs> he was involved, uh, but I'm what? understanding what, what you guys are saying. Okay. So did it actually have anything to do with the plot, Rob, or am I completely right? It has to do with moving the plot forward that he's going to show up now that that's been okay. unleashed. Did he's they make a, Did they make another one where he came back? 
No, because the movie didn't. Do yeah. Well so it's so again, it was a nothing throwaway oh God, scene that they just so did to plug them into it. it. I mean, it's <laughs> you guys well, are we're not so because wrong. okay, you are. Absolutely. Did it have any? No, no, no. Let's just two points. Did it have anything to do with the plot with the movie? Number one, the answer is it, no. Correct. But that I've already no, no, said no, 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 no. Yeah, yes scene. or no? Yes or no? It's debate. It's a post-credit singer. It's not okay. going to have anything to do with number the movie. Sometimes it does. Oh, no, it doesn't. It no, it doesn't ever. So the, never. Answer, answer the question, Rob. It answer answer the question. Question. No, you can't know the answer because it doesn't fucking matter at all. So the answer is no. We'll, we'll bring Rob back when he calms down. All right, number <laughs> two. Number two. Did they make a continuation of the 2013 movie? Uh, Rob completely left. That's fine. So it, they also didn't make a continuation of the 2013 movie. So also, it's still a no. So, anyways, um, I. <laughs> I agree with me. <laughs> so <laughs> I agree with you too on on this point. You know, it's it, it yes. is what it is. It's it's it had I'm, nothing to do with it. They were just putting him in there to put him in there and pay homage to it. Again, I didn't I didn't watch it. So <laughs> no. I, I never even saw that cussy. I had no idea it was in there. But just judging off what you guys say, it seems that it's an objective fact. So, I felt that that was just them paying homage to Bruce Campbell's character. That's what I thought. That's what I thought the first time I saw it. That's what, it what I thought the second time I, th I saw it. There obviously is the possibility that they had plans to do another Evil Dead and we'll never know because they didn't do it. What I do know is we had uh, Evil Dead Rise in 2023 and they are going to be coming out with, I heard, two more which I think is fantastic. This is my all-time favorite horror franchise. I think it is absolutely without question the strongest franchise now there's only five movies but it's the strongest franchise because all five hit and there are so many franchises like friday the 13th like nightmare on elm street like texas chainsaw massacre that just they don't all hit even scream i think scream is, is one of the is possibly like the second strongest franchise but they don't all hit in evil dead hits on every single one every single one of them is phenomenal i've rated all of them a five up until this point maybe i still will Ooh, who knows will. yeah and maybe the, I um, the tv show is wildly entertaining as well i don't know if you dove into that love it all. yes absolutely it's so good, it's so good. Well, i'm so well, glad well, well. look who decided to show up <laughs> you guys want to argue about stuff that doesn't matter still yeah let's yeah argue because that's that. that is my point is that it actually didn't matter but nobody's contesting that it, it's never supposed to be about the movie We've all agreed on that, so there's no reason to argue it. It's always to set up the future. It never. Well, then it, so then it's not nothing, because I said it was nothing. You agreed that it was nothing, and then you said it's also for the, for the actual movie. You can't do a post credit scene that affects the 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 plot line of the movie because it's after the credits. We don't need to have this argument anymore. Yes. Yeah, in terms of get, that, sometimes in some movies you get a teaser that someone actually might still be alive for a future movie. You're making my point. But that changes the plot of the actual movie because when you think someone's dead, then you get the post credit scene that's like, wait a second, maybe he's not actually dead. That changes your outcome of the actual movie because you're like, oh, wait a second, I can go home and sleep at night because my favorite character that I thought. Oh was my god! Was Hang on one sec. Dead. Hang on one sec. Only because this is a live horror movie review, will I pull some shit like this? And I get the poster right behind me. You see it? Jaws, Arcade 2600 Hunters says Jaws, all sequels hit as hard as the original. Arcade, I love you. You're one of our, one of our biggest fans. That is the worst take I have ever heard. <laughs> oh, Jaws, no. the original, this, this, the only good movie of the entire franchise. The only, the only one. Also, one of the only good shark movies ever. I thought Deep Blue Sea was kind of fun, are, yeah. but I'm, dude, Dark, Deep Blue Sea is one of those movies that I'm so scared to watch again because I loved it so much. Oh, don't watch it. it! No, not good. No, so really oh, bad. Oh, oh, it's 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 good bad. Like it's it's yeah. I mean, it's definitely it's good because bad. it's bad. Like I yeah, saw yeah. I saw the whole internet raving about the movie. Um, what the hell was it like Under Paris or something like that? Um, oh yeah, Under Paris, it's like I a new shark it. movie. Jesse, do you know why I didn't watch this movie? Did I tell you how bad it is? No, I saw you post it in the horror movie group. You're like, that movie is horrible. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> it was one of the worst movies <laughs> I've ever seen. Like, it, oh, hang on, hang on. Another one. Another another comment. Steph says Sharknado. I don't know what 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 she's saying about Sharknado, but she just said the word, shark, the word Sharknado. Okay. I don't know if she's saying it's good or bad. Sharknado, phenomenal. It's awesome. But it's 
because it's purposely bad. This movie yeah. was trying to be good. I, I, I think it's called Under Paris. I, I might be getting it wrong, but I just I just saw it all over the horror movie groups and everything. And I watched it like two minutes in. I'm like, okay, I got to give it a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because I think it might be a lost in translation thing because I think it's a movie that's in French and they, you know, so they dubbed oh. it over in English. Oh. Usually I'll watch those you movies just in there. French. They, they might as well have, because that's how bad it was. But um Let yeah. jump. <laughs> chant, chant. <laughs> so usually with movies like that, I prefer to watch it in its original language and just read the subtitles. Mm, same. Um, this it doesn't matter. <laughs> can we get back to um can we get yeah. back to yeah. Evil yeah. Dead 2013? Because we have yes. very important real thoughts on it. I feel like we're half an hour in. Let's talk about what makes this movie what it is. And I think that this movie is fantastic i'm a huge fan of this movie i think the acting was phenomenal across the board i didn't have a problem with any of the actors i thought they all crushed it and i thought the writing was great my favorite part of this movie though was the practical effects which is kind of like almost like an homage to the uh 1981 and 82 and the so the practical effects number one and number two was the uh um Lost my train of thought. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I liked the best about this particular movie: the subverting of expectations on who your final character is going to be, who your hero of the movie is, because it's set up as the brother, like a redemption arc for him, right? Where he wasn't there for his sister the entire time she was going through. They were going through the mother's death for all of her drug abuse issues. And it's setting up where we're following mostly him because his sister has already kind of started to be possessed by, you know, a spirit of one of the deadites and you're following him sort of through the movie. I mean, you're seeing from other, you're seeing other characters go through stuff too, but he's really setting up as the hero. And then you just get the absolute game changer that he's not the hero at, at all. It's actually the sister who's going through this and you changed to her perspective of being the hero of this movie. And I love the way they did that because the first time you see it, I don't think it's what you expect by any means, because to your point, Dave, they're, they're not remaking evil dead, but they're playing around with a lot of stuff that evil dead did throughout the three movies, by the way, there's like an homage to each movie in here. You have all the, the cabin stuff from the first movie you have, um, the hand getting cut off twice in this movie from the second movie. And you have her battling herself, which is part of the third movie, right? Where there's an evil Ash and that's who the main antagonist is in the third movie. Mm -hmm. And it's an evil character's name was Mia, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So there's an evil Mia that shows up at the end of the movie. So there's an homage to each of the three movies and you just, you subvert the expectations of the brother Dave actually being the the hero and i love the way that they did that story arc yeah i agree with you and the thing that i was forgetting that i wanted to talk about was the camera shots the cinematography of this movie was phenomenal and it's if you have to compare it to the original the 1981 where they had the the pov of the demon coming through the woods right you had to compete with that camera work which with the low budget they had in 1981 is hard to do it's hard to compete with that because it's so iconic, but the camera work in this movie was amazing and it was different. They didn't try and do the demon going through the woods POV. They did other things that, that were just perfect coming through the woods and just the, the, the shots, the cabin, the shots, the characters in the cabin and just the unconventional camera work that was in this movie, I thought was so outstanding and different from other movies. I thought that that along with the practical effects was really good. And to your point, Rob, with the, um, the, they threw a curveball at you. Cause you felt like you thought you knew who the final character was going to be. You thought, you knew they, 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 they laid it out perfectly for you. And then they punched you right in the mouth. Well, that's the thing is that like, if you have a character in a movie and his name is Dave, he's, and especially if it's your brother, Dave, Mm -hmm. he's going to let you down eventually. Yeah, for sure. Always. It's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. Inevitable, Dave. <laughs> wow. And that's all the time we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, the, the camera work was so good in this movie. The, the 
physical and practical effects amazing there's a little bit of cgi some of it wasn't phenomenal cgi but it was so quick and so lightly used that it didn't really play an effect this movie let me it, just on the on the cgi let me just just a little bit of of a comparison right so this movie was 2013 and two years prior was 2011 which was the thing prequel which was the worst cgi in cinematic history only two years separated that from this so whatever cgi was in this movie that you thought was not up to par compare it to that and we'll say okay. it was possibly the best cgi that ever has been <laughs> created yeah i mean when you don't use a lot of cgi i don't think you can actually even fit into the category of best cgi but yeah, i will have to push back on the thing being the worst cgi ever now some of it was the was really 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 bad but my God, there is some really bad CGI out there. So it's up there though. The thing the, the thing we make was uh, ruined because of the CGI, especially because of a movie that if you go back to the original thing was so praised and so loved and it's become so iconic because of the practical effects and you just could have done that again. And the crazy thing is with that movie is they did do it again. They just didn't fucking use it. Like, what are you doing? Like you, you went through all this shit. You spent the money, you hired the people, you got it done. We're not talking about the thing. We're talking about this movie. Uh, the practical effects in this movie and the physical effects were so good. Everything was, was, was crazy good. I, just, I can't believe that I didn't like remember how good this movie was. And well, I almost went into this thinking, I'm like, oh God, we got to go watch a movie that I don't even think was good. But it was, uh, dude, they, they knocked this out of the park. Again, the only issue that I really have with this movie is that like there was a brother named Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll respond to you saying that you don't remember how good it was. And I think, because I didn't revisit this movie either. And I think what it is, is it's one of those movies that's like so good, but it's not a comfort movie by any means. Like you can't, you can't be like, ah, oh, you know what? I just need to kick back, relax and watch a movie I enjoy. Let me watch either Evil Dead 2013 or Martyrs, right? Like, you know, but not, no, those movies are not comparable. I'm just saying in terms this, of this one is yeah the, the only difference is that like yes while this movie is over the top brutal if gore isn't your thing this movie isn't for you like this movie was brutal again like like tongues getting split in half arms getting cut off faces getting ripped up like the, the it, it ends in an actual like raining bloodbath like if you're not into gore this movie isn't for you but it is weirdly still enjoyable it's, it's an movie. enjoyable movie to watch it's fun still which and, is why it's not comparable to Martyrs. Martyrs, this movie's not a good comparison to Martyrs. This movie, I would compare more to Terrifier. This is like comic book gore. Just like over the top, just blood all over the screen, just fun gore. This is not, Martyrs is bleak. Martyrs is dark. And it's not, if you, this isn't like this, I don't even put this in like the gore porn category. It doesn't, it doesn't fit in with Hostel. It doesn't fit in with Teristas. It doesn't fit in with martyrs or anything like that this is comic book gore this is classic slasher type it's not a slasher but it's like slasher type gore it's just fun it's not like it's nothing that's going to make you feel maybe i'm just desensitized but it's nothing that's going to make you feel like empty inside after you watch it no. some of it is very over the top so if you're not if, if you're new to this or if you're a little bit sensitive to this stuff uh viewer discretion advised it is uh it, some of it is over the top but it it was not and, and to your point dave like, like you watch martyrs and i'm just like wow i fucking hate dave <laughs> dave, dave made me do this like, like i can't like, i'm having i'm not having a good time movie was done oh you know done pretty well but like just not having a good time the whole fucking time but i will say and it's weird because if you have the character, what was his name? The guy with the glasses who kind of caused all this stuff in the movie. The yeah. Yeah. Was it Eric in the movie? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, so for him, um, so he's going through, he finds the book. He's kind of interested in it. He's opening it up. He's reading out the words. There's a whole bunch of, <laughs> whole bunch of messages scribbled in the book in giant letters of saying, don't read this page. Hey, stop now. This isn't a good idea. Stop fucking reading this book. You've gone too far. And he still just ignores the, the warnings and continues to read on. And he causes all this shit. And he kind of knows about it early on. And I just want to get to two points before I get cut off. But he, when he starts getting absolutely punished for that, I'm like, good. 
you fucking idiot. You know, like that, that's kind of like me inside, which is weird because he's a likable character. I don't know. He maybe didn't deserve it, but at the same time, it's like, dude, you know what you're doing. There's messages on every page telling you to stop right now. And he just keeps going with it. And the other thing that I liked, but I kind of think that they could have stretched a little bit more again, to go back to the original plot line of you have a person who is an addict and they're trying to clean them up in this cabin I thought they could have milked that for a few more minutes, maybe like, or at least a few more scenes where they don't know if it's her just acting crazy because of the withdrawals or if it's her actually possessed by a demon. I feel like they rushed a little bit with straight from, they just throw the possession out the window and went straight to, Oh, never mind, It's a demon. I feel like they could have kept that going a little bit longer, but it, it, they didn't have to. I feel like they just wanted to start getting into the brutal kills. So let's back it up a little bit um to eric and the issues with eric and this is this is you're not your your complaint is not unique and i don't mean that in a bad way it's not like you're you're not like the only one who says that but i have a little pushback on this and i, don't know I was like wait. whether it was a complaint or not it was the so when i when i read reviews on this movie it's it's always like eric was an idiot why did he do that he should have known that this book was it said don't read the book and he read it anyways and he he caused this whole thing, so he deserved to get needles jabbed in his eye over and over again. No, Eric was your typical, uh, almost like I don't want to say atheist, but like he was a he didn't believe in anything. He wasn't he was the skeptic. He was the one who was like, I don't believe in any of this stuff. And he found this cool book, and he's a nerd, and he's reading the book, and it says don't read the book, and he's of course I'm going to read the book that says don't read the book, which I think. Any of us would be like, would any of us would do that, right? I'm gonna find a book that's, that looks like that. It looks like the the skin of somebody's face stretched across the binding. Yeah, I'm gonna read that book, even if it says don't read this book. Of course, maybe. Of course but, but here here's where I would have drawn the line. When I went into the basement and there was just dead cats everywhere, mm -hmm. I'm not touching a single thing in that basement. I am turning around and leaving the basement and never returning. Probably getting in the car and leaving like this because yeah. it's not about. Oh, I don't want to be in the basement. It's not about, oh, I'm scared of spooky stuff. It's about that's disgusting. There's probably bugs and maggots and all sorts of disgusting shit going on in that basement, diseases and terrible smells. The smell had to be awful. And I think this is another part that was a little bit weird. So I know like she had the heightened senses because she's going through withdrawals. Really, she was possessed by a demon at the time. But when she could smell it, nobody else could smell it. And then they go downstairs and there's this absolute massacre of cats and animals all over the basement mm -hmm. like dude if there's a dead mouse somewhere in your house you're going to smell it all over the house the entire family is going to smell it for three days at least everyone's going to smell it this be the only thing you could smell in that house if there's 150 dead cats hanging from your basement ceiling the one girl who's who's going through her, her battle with drug addiction isn't going to be the only one who smells that that was the only thing i was like that's they all would have smelled that quick quick related story i'll make it super quick this happened to me recently like within the last year, we smelled a dead animal. Mm -hmm. Where is it coming from? We searched everywhere. We searched the basement. We searched the attic. We searched the closets. Where is this smell coming from? And it was getting worse and worse. We're like, it's coming from the bathroom. And, but we couldn't figure it out. We're like, what is it? Finally, I was like, I, I tracked it down and I took 50, the light 50, switch. It was 56 dead cats in your basement. It was 56 dead cats in the basement. We're like, oh my God, I had, I can't believe it was the dead cats that we were keeping in the basement. No, I took off the light switch cover in the bathroom and there were, a mouse had climbed into the electrical box, like the junction box there and just electrocuted itself and died that's, inside the light switch. I took the wildly, thing, I, That's wildly impressive that you thought to check behind the light switch. Who well, is whatever, we, Walter White, who has ever thought to look behind the light switch? Dude, I followed my nose. I was like, okay. where is the smell coming from? And I was like, it's coming from the, I swear to God, this sounds insane. It's coming from the light switch. I just wanted to see Dave sniffing his light switch. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know he did. Now that's the next, that's the next emote we make. <laughs> that's the next emote for YouTube is Dave sniffing a light switch. <laughs> Back to Evil Dead 2013. One, one more point I want to make about this. And then I think I, we haven't heard from Rob in like 45 minutes as usual. But this movie... I said it was, you know, comic book gore. It wasn't like, you know, like super bleak, disturbing horror, but it was what this movie did have that separates it from other movies that are like it is the terrifying 
imagery that they were able to to portray, right? Typical, like uh, not typical, um, particular scenes that they had were um, obviously the exacto knife where she was licking it and slice her tongue in half. You have the scene where the little girl cut her arm off with the turkey carving knife, the reciprocating knife, just cut her, it, the girl cutting her face off in the bathroom. There were these scenes in this movie were so much more disturbing than anything I can think of at the time, 2013. And this was before like the big gore porn. Um, I think it was uh, Martyrs came before it, but like most of like the Saw movies came after it. A lot of the Final Destination movies came out after it. Obviously, there were some before, but this movie I feel like really stands out with how disturbing some of the imagery was in this movie. And it wasn't just like typical stuff that was redone and rebranded and just, you know, shown in a different, it was totally unique. Kind of, yes. Yeah, so yeah, like all the kind scenes. Of. That, well, no, I'm saying all the scenes that you just mentioned were unique. The one scene that they redid and redid it more brutally, and I won't go into much detail because I know we have younger listeners, but was the tree scene. So the tree scene paid homage to, I think, the first movie because you also had that tree scene in the first movie. They read it, re they redid that tree scene in this movie and made it a billion times more brutal and graphic. And I was watching, I'm like, they're not going to do that. They're, they, they're doing that. Okay. That's fucking brutal. Like it was the most awful scene in this movie. And when you compare that to people cutting their faces off, yeah, the tree scene was, uh, was the worst. It was the worst. And that just goes to show that they were, they were just taking the gloves off and they were just going to go all out with this movie. I don't and agree. I think Did it wasn't. I mean, it was like we all so we all know the original tree scene from from nineteen eighty one. If you saw all the movies, you saw it, and it wasn't anything. I mean, not that they could do anything more than that. But the difference between that scene and the scenes that I was talking about is they didn't cut away from it. It was they showed them her cutting her face off. They showed her cutting her arm off. They showed her slicing her tongue in half. Obviously, that scene they're not going to show more than what they did. Obviously. But like that, that was the difference between those scenes, of course, disturbing across the board, but the difference is like, they don't cut away from the horrific scenes that make this movie horrific. Right. And they didn't cut away from this one. That wasn't really my point. And my point was that it was, it was brutal. It was more brutal than the, the first movie. And, and it was, this was the only one that they took from the original. Everything else was pretty much, oh, then obviously Ash cuts his arm off or whatever, but it was a different reason. I think that she cut her, I don't know. It was kind of the same. But yeah, so I guess you could put both of them in that same category. Not a big deal. Anyways, this movie, so much fun from start to finish. Um, I was so pleasantly surprised when I went to rewatch it. And I was like, wait, this was awesome. I honestly thought I was going to go back and watch the worst Evil Dead out there. And this is easily one of my favorites. So I enjoyed it. Anything else on the uh, on the movie before we get some ratings? Rob? I, think you, I think you guys have taken all the time up that we can use. Well, it's perfect because I didn't talk for the first 23 minutes. So you can go back and watch. So you had your you had your fun. Let us have our fun. Anyways, <laughs> what have you got? What do you got? I, I got this one. I'll start off my rating. I got this one at a 4.8. I fully enjoyed this movie. Wow. I don't think it's as iconic as the original ones um, for a few reasons. But I, I, overall, I, I don't really have any issues with this movie. I thought the acting was good. I love the effects in it. I like the storyline start to finish it was enjoyable over the top gory again if it's not your thing if you don't like gory movies this one is not going to fly for you go back and watch the originals they're not as gory as this one is but I'm yeah overall, my, my, my only fun. issue only issue with this one is uh is they have to deal with a, a brother named dave so go ahead dave press me yeah sure so you gave uh, army of darkness a five so what about uh this movie was not as good as the army of darkness they're not comparable they're completely different movies the, the, the Army of Darkness is a comedy. This is not a comedy. So we're, we're, we're comparing two di completely different movie types. I understand it's the same franchise. But yeah, it's like comparing Monty Python and Game of Thrones. Go I'm going to I'm 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 okay. jump in here. I'm going to jump I in. Rob, I don't think so. I, I, think I, I think I am actually going to jump in here. I'm going to give it a five. And for the reason that Jesse just said, and that's why I'm jumping in for finally, um, it's not the same genre of movie. And that's why I love it is because it carries on with that Evil Dead tradition of each one being sort of a different type of genre in the franchise. We get our actual like 
regular horror movie in the Evil Dead 1. We get the comedy horror in Evil Dead 2. We get the action movie with Evil Dead, you know, Army of Darkness, the third one. This is more of that gritty, just ugh, horror movie. And then it even continues on with Evil Dead Rise. So I'm going to give it a five. And I also want to just point out, Arcade brought it up in chat, the absolute amazing chainsaw scene at the end of this movie is one of the best chainsaw scenes in cinema history. I had pulled Arcade's comment there and I wanted to leave it there for a reason because I want to actually do this because it's fun. Now that we've relate, now that we've reviewed all five, I would love for all of us to put them in order. But first, I'm going to give my uh, review on this movie. This is a five for me and I'm going to make a point that it was actually Rob's point that he made to me a while ago off, um, off stream. But this movie was so good. This movie was an allegory for drug addiction and they did such a good job. So my biggest thing about horror movies when they try and force an allegory or try to force a message or a social commentary and they blunder it and they just hand fist you in the face with some stupid message that no one cares about. I hate that. This movie was an allegory for drug addiction. And Rob, you made this point to me not too long ago and it really like they, they, they wanted to drive home the the horror of drug addiction and turn that into an allegory into a uh, into a horror movie this movie was about drug addiction obviously with mia where she where they're, they're they're going to this cabin to try and detox her from drugs and the allegory is she lost to the drug addiction and she lost everybody everyone around her died in the movie and the allegory is that when you uh, get addicted to drugs and you can't kick it and you lose the battle to drugs, you lose everyone around you. And they did such a good job illustrating that with this movie, with what I think. And that's why this, I think that's one of the reasons this movie gets a five. And I've given all five of the Evil Dead movies fives. I gave Evil Dead Rise a 5.1 because it's my favorite of the five, but they're all fives for different reasons. The one was, it was the beginning. It was the, it was the shock of it. It was, it, they, they rocked us with nothing that we've seen at that point. And it was so disturbing. It was a five for that. The second one, they remade it as a comedy, five. The, the third one was an action movie and it was just so off the wall, ridiculous and so well done. And Bruce Campbell absolutely knocked it out of the park, five. This one's a five for the reason I just said and, and Evil Dead Rise is my favorite of all of them. They're fives. This is the best horror franchise available. It's the only one that, that, that knocks every single movie out of the park. I love this movie. And to, back to Arcade's um, request for us to to give them, to, to put them in order from best to worst or worst to best, I guess if I'm going to give it my least favorite to my most favorite, mind you, they're all fives. I love all of them. It's going to be um, from least to best, Army of Darkness. So I guess five, right, no, no, sorry. Army of Darkness is three. So three, two, one, five, four. Four or five, sorry. Three, two, one, four, five in that order. I will go with, uh, I'm going to beat your mic, Dave, because everyone is really loud in your house. Uh, let's go with, I would say, I think Evil Dead 2 is still my favorite. Then, it, what is it, Evil Dead Rise, the newest one? That would be number two for me. And it's, it's Army of Darkness. And then... Uh, and then Evil Dead 2013, and then whichever one I left out. Which one did I leave out? The original? The first one? Yeah, that was your least one. favorite. Um, I mean, these are all, the, again, I, I gave them all five except for the, I guess I would have to put this one last because I you would have to five. put this one last, yeah. Yeah. So rewatchability, though, I would put this one last and swap out the original, I think. But it doesn't really matter because they're they're all so good. They're all so rewatchable. This one is is like I said, it's almost a five for me. Um, I just I, I just love Bruce Campbell. <laughs> I mean, the and, and the new one is just so fucking good that it didn't even need him, even if he's just biting an apple. You know, we all know he's there biting that apple. Mm. Rob, where you got him? I think this is really what day are you going to catch me on to to rank these movies? Because like you said, they're, they're all fives. I straight up thought about putting Army of Darkness number one. I enjoyed that movie so much. Yeah, it's so it's stupid and so so goofy, but it's not. It's just so different than the rest. But go ahead. All right. So from least favorite to most favorite, um, 
Probably five, four, three, one, two. Is probably where I am. That's fun. Rise is your least favorite. Probably. I hate, dude. I fucking hate that. Call but, uh, so but again, but again, we're we're but, we're you, all in agreement that every there you can't miss with these movies. They're all. If, if you ask me, you just week, missed. If you, you missed. ask me in a week, that that might change. But I will say that Rise is more rewatchable than 2013. It's more rewatchable. I I don't know if it's a better movie. I'd really have to sit there and think about it. I think and like, and like, what am I Rise looking just, for that night? Yeah, Rise is just so much fun while being gory. Yeah. This one was super gory and over the top and brutal and pretty fun. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. They're all great movies you can't fucking miss. Go watch some Evil Dead movies. You got nothing to watch. Go watch them. If gore isn't your thing, then go watch the earlier ones. The later ones get more gory as they go. But that's pretty much where we're at on that tell us what you think where would you rank the evil dead movies what did you think of this one did you see it in the movies and did you think that it was garbage in the movies or, or not that great in the movies or kind of forgettable and then you go home and rewatch it like we did and we're like oh wait this is one of the best horror movies of all time i can't believe that it uh it got a bad rap initially like it's it is so good in my opinion but that's kind of where we're at here so let us know what you think in the comments rob why don't you uh, land this ship yeah, so that is going to do it for this review of Evil Dead 2013. Again, we are quite sad that this was the last Evil Dead movie until they come out with another one. Maybe, maybe we'll have to review the TV show. Sounds like a potential Patreon exclusive in the future, maybe. But if you do want us to do that, you can join Patreon and let us know if that's something you'd like to see over there. But for myself, Rob Coakley, Jesse Wilkins, and Dave Wilkins, we want to know what you thought of this movie. Leave it in the comments. Until then, we will catch you later. Peace.